Professor Malcolm Davis, the head of the Ealing Law School, takes a different point of view to me and you and the Guardian prison correspondent, so we better hear what he's got to say. Professor Malcolm, welcome to the show. Yes. Uh, thank you. Now tell us, just why are you opposed to this European Court decision? Well, a um, number of reasons, and I agree entirely with your ideas that we don't want prison as a brutalizing place, uh, and that inmates don't lose all their rights when they go in prison. That's entirely right. But there are, the issues are more subtle than that, I think. Um, and just to start with, the notion that uh, the government, the, the UK has, has broken the law is not quite the case in that our current law, the law set by Parliament, says that people who are sent to prison aren't entitled to vote. People who are sentenced to prison are for sure. a prison term. Well, that's so, right. But, but then our law in this aspect, in this regard, is trumped by, well, by that, the European so, law on human rights, of which we're a signatory. Well, of course we are. But the question is who's, who's, who's the law is right and who should actually set the decision, should it be a parliament elected by the will of the people, or should it be judges in a court, which have no responsibility for the, uh, running the political system in a country, should they determine who's entitled to vote? Uh, all systems have Well, it was a parliament, wasn't it? It was the British parliament that determined they oughtn't to be able to vote. That's correct. So it actually, then, it's, it's consistent with our laws. It's inconsistent with the European Convention on Human Rights, as yeah, currently it, interpreted it, by it, judges in Strasbourg. But it seems to me that rather contradicts the point you just made, that you, your argument was that judges who are not part of the political system, unless I picked you up wrongly, uh, are somehow better placed or in a less partisan place in order to make that. Maybe I picked you up no, wrong. My, my point is, who has the right to set the laws of the country? Well, we know, we know, we, we, we know that, and you're a professor of law, so you definitely know it, that uh, when we joined the European Union, and by treaty, after treaty, we agreed to share some of our sovereignty with the European Union. George, I don't think there's anything to do with the Euro European Union. This is the uh, European Convention on Human Rights. It is. It signed much earlier. It is. And it's nothing to do with the what? EU. Much it's earlier. It's a convention we, decide, we, we, we signed into, and we are signatures to it. Exactly. Right. So, so they have the right to make this decision. As indeed does Parliament have the right to make the laws of the country to decide who has the right to vote. Indeed. And when you describe the right to vote and who can't vote, you actually missed out one important category. You said... You mentioned two groups. Of Peers, people. lunatics, and prisoners, yeah. Yes, well, young people. People under the age of 18 can't vote. Well, that's so right. All systems have a, uh, decide who is, who is entitled to vote. And it tends to be sure. based on a series of factors such as residency, that's nationality, that's and true. some other features. That's and true, what we Malcolm. have in this country, the Parliament has decided that people who have broken the law sufficiently serious or, re or in a repetitive way to be sent to prison, they forfeit their right to vote because they have shown they've breached the social contract that we all live by. They've shown by their behavior, either as thieves or as people involved in some violent crime, that they've decided that the law doesn't apply to them. So people get outraged when the notion that somebody's arguing the case, that they have special rights to vote, even though they are not prepared to follow the laws, which they might well be voting well, for are, in the future. Well, there are a large number of people outside of prison who don't follow the laws, as you very well know. Not everyone in prison is guilty, and not everyone out of prison is innocent. Well, so, the, it's, the, it's the best indicator we have in this country that someone's been well, convicted not by sure. the courts of the land. Well, I'm not sure about that, but let me take you back to an earlier point you made there. Uh, the difference between a, a person under 18 is that they did not have the right to vote to begin with. A prisoner, on the other hand, over 18, did have the vote, and Parliament or government took that right away from them. The European Court has decided five years ago that that was unlawful, and five years on, we finally succumbed to that court decision. We've finally come in tune or in line with what is the law, and as a professor of law, I would have thought you were all in favour of that. Well, I'm afraid it's not quite as easy. We're not quite sure what the law is, because if you look at other European countries, and there was an important case this year, Frodel in Austria, where, uh, uh, again, the Austrian government don't have a bank blanket uh, 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 ruling on the right to vote for prisoners. They say prisoners over the year, if they're in sentence to prison and they are sentenced for over one year, then they can't vote. Well, that was taken to the, to the, to the uh, European court, and that was also regarded as unacceptable, mm -hmm. because... According to the, the test, which is used by the European Court, there, there has to be a very limited um, use of the uh, debarment to vote, and that should be decided by judges, not by Parliament. And that's one of the constitutional sort of issues which underpins this complex uh, 
situation we found ourselves in. So how we resolve it is yet to be uh, 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 solved. Um, there's no actual solution. If you heard the debate in Parliament this week, people were talking about should it be one year, two years. That won't work because the, the European Court has said it's got to be a judge who debars a person, and it has to be on, on a, an offence which relates specifically to a, uh, a matter of the rule of law or the infringement of democracy, so that, for instance, someone engaging in electoral fraud could be debarred, and, of course, Guy Fawkes, he could have been debarred because he wanted to blow up Parliament. Of course, so it, other uh, people could. Yeah, we didn't have votes in those days, at least yeah. not for the most people. Um, but the long and the short of it, Professor, is this that the court has made its uh, position known. We are subject to the court's ruling in this regard. Prisoners will have to be given the vote. I don't myself regard it as very important one way or the other. But as you started out by agreeing with me, that it's really rather important that people don't come out of prison more brutalized, less civilized, even than they were when they went in, it might just be a small measure which might just go some way to improving the way that most prisoners come out of prison, no? Worth a try? Well, let me, uh, if you, let me answer you. I, I would say two things. One is, it's not the most significant issue in the world, given the financial and the other issues that are going on. And I agree with that, that it might be a small issue in some minds. But you can hear from the nature of the public response that at a symbolic level, it's a very emotive issue in which people feel very outraged. Yeah, and, there are and, lots and, of... And, and you don't seem to understand that. And you no, I understand it well. I, I, I understand it well. Unlike you, uh, I've regularly placed myself before the public for elections, so I know very well, better than you, what the public think. I also sit here for three hours every week, facing them uh, on the telephone. But let me tell you that you'll always be able to get outraged of Tunbridge Wells. Uh, you, you, if, you, if I were to call a poll on talk sport on whether we should... Uh, bring back uh, capital punishment or bring back corporal punishment or force prisoners to wear uh, uh, to, to, to go out on chain gangs, you'd get the same kind of trenchant response that we got from an earlier caller. But that doesn't make it right. No, and it doesn't make it wrong either. The nature of the trenchant response of public opinion is something which I think you've got to get to grips with in a democracy and just not ignore it and have some re willingness to react to it. In terms of your specific question, there is actually no evidence whatsoever that giving the person a right to vote will make them a more responsible person such that the law, law breaker, who's, who the person is in prison, becomes a law-abiding citizen. Uh, and in that sense, uh, if it works, and if we had a strategy of rehabilitation in which we said to prisoners, look, if you show some remorse for your crime, and most and many don't, if you were prepared to work towards a sort of a citizenship um, strategy and want to get involved in the community, that would be an excellent idea. Who would disagree with that? And if given them the right... Well, vote, there are plenty of people who would fall well, up here and disagree I, I with wouldn't. it. Well, I wouldn't. Okay. But at you least you, okay, at least you and I would be on the same... Here. Let's talk about the people who are here, you yeah, and I, George. You and I if, would agree on that. We would agree that if, it, if, we could, if we showed that there was some evidence that by developing a, a stronger sense of community, sense of community responsibility, giving people the vote, that would be an excellent idea. However, that's not what the proposal is. This is a blanket proposal that all prisoners have the right to vote. And that's what people are being exercised about. And some of your callers feel a bit hot under the collar about, and uh, you don't seem to understand that. I think it's very natural that they well, feel that. I understand it very well, but I combat arguments that I disagree with. I fight them. I fight views of which I disagree. I'm being told to wrap now, but let me ask you quickly this question. I'm assuming... It would be remarkable as the, if the head of Ealing Law School had a different point of view. I'm assuming you're against bringing back hanging. Am I right about that? Well, it's, it's not an issue I've, I'm, I'm on here to discuss. But oh, what, what's the, what, a telling, what a telling response. I'm glad I'm not a student at Ealing Law School. Professor Malcolm Davis, thank you very much indeed. 08717 that's the number to call to join the great debate. Are you with the professor or are you with me?